When you think of Tentacruel, what usually comes to mind is support with Rapid Spin, solid coverage with things like Sludge Bomb, Surf, and Ice Beam, but allow me to introduce Swords Dance Sweeper Tenta. Tentacruel has some sleeper stats in general, most notably its base 120 special defense, along with 100 speed. While it has only base 70 attack, people can easily be caught off guard with a max speed and attack set with its boosting powers of Swords Dance to make us extra sharp. Its solid speed allows it to outspeed threats and hit them with coverage like Knock Off, and stab with liquidation and poison jab. Its ability clear body can block stat drops like Intimidate, and with its great natural bulk it can live special hits, and the sweeper tentacruel is super fun to try to catch people by surprise. Ladies and gentlemen, I have brought you here today to spread the word of the sharp jellyfish. It's definitely an unconventional, and in my opinion, a much more fun way to use the tentacruel, and if you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. It's free, it'll only take you a second, I promise you will not regret it. And without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into the match. Alright, so my opponent today is working with a pretty scary team. I see the Arachmanid, which leads me to believe maybe they're going to lead with that thing to try to get up some sticky web. I decided to toss out the donut because I could try to get some counter shenanigans going there. But they end up going with the Grim Snarl, and this just allows me an opportunity to set up the Stealth Rock. So, they decide to actually just parting shot directly out of here, as this buff-ass gremlin does not want anything to do uh, with the cheat day meal today, and they're going to end up going into the Garchomp. So, this is the one thing that really kind of stops Tentacruel in its tracks, unless I'm already set up. And this thing is a bit of a threat here. I, I haven't taken any damage yet. Of course, I do still have my Sturdy intact uh, on the Golem, but I'm kind of worried you know, about this Garchomp setting up. So, what I decide to do here is... I'm actually just going to switch into Masquerain. Now, the reason for that is because I can both get an Intimidate, but also, if they do decide to go for the Earthquake, obviously, we can uh, we can float above that. They do end up going for that Earthquake, and the Garchomp is now sitting at the old minus one. So, Masquerain has a couple different options here. Overall, it's not really super useful in this matchup, so I'm kind of willing to burn it here. I'm going to try to go for a Quiver Dance. If they're not carrying the Rock Slide, I'll be fine, which they are, in fact, carrying the Rock Slide. So, they throw a bundle of rocks at me, and that does, you know, with a critical hit, probably doesn't matter there. It takes care of the Masquerade, so, you know, that thing goes down. However, I was at least able to get an Intimidate off on that thing, and it doesn't seem to be able to set up, at least easily. So, what I'm going to end up doing is just go directly back into the Alolan Golem. Now, of course, the Earthquake looks free here, but it is, in fact, not that free, because they're going to go for that Earthquake. Actually, I end up living with 7 HP. Doesn't even need to use my Sturdy, but then this allows me to go for that counter, and that is going to take care of the Garchomp. We do, in fact, also kill ourselves just by touching it with our counter fist. And uh, that is unfortunate because that, you know, that rough skin does just take care of me. So I didn't get to use my Custap Berry, you know, on the Alolan Golem, but I'm pretty fine with that. So at this point, we have ourselves an empty-ass, lonely-ass battlefield. Now, they decide to go into the Alolan Ninetales, which is respectable. This thing probably wants to get up, you know, the Aurora Veil and just do annoying Ninetales shenanigans. I decide to go into the Pachirisu. Now, this thing, it comes in pretty freely against a lot of their team. And honestly, this little squirrel, it, it demands respect, for real. I can go for a Nuzzle. I'm actually faster uh, with Jolly Max Speed. That shows me this thing is probably modest. I get the Nuzzle off, and that paralyzes it. And also, we get the full para. So, that's what you get for messing around with the, with the squirrel here. So... At this point, I'm just going to end up going for the Super Fang. I want to get this thing down into range uh, where something can easily pick it off. It does, in fact, allow them to set up that Aurora Veil, which is mostly fine. Um, it's going to be a little bit annoying to kind of work around, but the reason why the Patrisu does not care that much is because I do have the Encore. So I can be like, damn, that was really cool. Go ahead and, uh, and show me that one more time. I go for that Encore. They're obviously forced into the Aurora Veil, and this is where Pachirisu is great, because I got my Para, I Encore them, they're obviously stuck there, and they're going to switch, so I can then go for a U-turn and pivot on whatever they decide to bring in, which ends up being this pink fatty, the Clefable. I get the U-turn here for a little bit of chip damage. I actually end up getting a critical hit there, which is like, hey, good job, Squirrel. You've done your job perfectly, and at this point, I can choose what I want to bring in here. Now, Tentacruel does look pretty nice here. Now, the reason it, why it could be pretty bad is if this thing is working with the Unaware ability. That's kind of a toss-up. A lot of the time, people work with the uh, Magic Guard ability on Clefable, so they're not going to be able to ignore uh, my Swords Dance boost if, you know, they're Magic Guard, which I believe them to be. They also probably don't have much coverage against me, so I'm just going to directly go for that Swords Dance, and the Jellyfish is looking quite sharp out here. I get that plus two, and they actually decide to go for the Cosmic Power. As if this thing wasn't fat enough, it's now behind an Aurora Veil with a Cosmic Power boost, 
and uh, it's only a matter of time until this thing is just the thickest Clefable in all the land. So I just decided to go for the poison jab here. I can scout for some damage. I'm actually able to do a whole lot even through uh, a cosmic power and, you know, the reflect being up. They decide to go for a second cosmic power here, get themselves to plus two on both defenses. And I'm just going to go ahead and keep on jabbing. I go for this next one as it looks like it has a chance to kill, but of course it lives with literally one HP and that allows them to go for the moonlight. So they just bask in the old glowing moon and that does bring them up above half. And at this point, I could potentially start to set up more swords dances, but I'm just going to keep jabbing. At plus two, Tentacruel looks great against their team. And it's honestly, it's only a matter of time you know, until that Aurora Veil is going to wear off. And as long as they don't have way more cosmic powers ups, we're actually, we're actually in a good spot. So they Moonlight once again. I just continue to go for this poison jab. I actually, I wanted to get a poison here. It doesn't end up happening as you know, they Moonlight again. I'm like, what is your agenda with this moon situation, bro? They're just going for another Moonlight here. And now, the Aurora Veil actually does wear off. So, that is quite unfortunate. Clefable has a bad time here because now, without the, the help of your, your, whittle, your whittle screens, it's actually going to take that thing out. So, down goes the Clefable. Uh, the moon did not end up on that thing's side. And now they decide to revenge switch in the Grimmsnarl. So, considering they have the Aurora Veil Ninetales on their team, I imagine this thing is probably not going to have the dual screens. It does, however, have the Prankster Thunder Wave. So, they put my tentacle ass in a wheelchair and now I am quite slow because uh, also I get fully paralyzed and that is not ideal. However, this thing probably doesn't also have much to hit me with and honestly, poison jab and my liquidation coverage looks pretty nice against their team. So I'm just gonna stay in here and just go with the old, old classic poison jabs. They're gonna end up going for the taunt as they realize, damn, this tentacle is way more of a threat than I thought this was gonna be. And uh, that is exactly what we're going for here. So we're taunted. It does not matter as I don't click the sword stance there. And a poison jab just knocks that thing out. So that is amazing. Now, next they decide to go into the nine tails. We're both paralyzed and both of our speed stats are halved at this point. Now, we did notice earlier Pachirisu was actually faster. So it turns out Tentacruel can go first here, but I do get fully paralyzed. Our base 100 speed doesn't come in super clutch for us. It does allow them to go for the freeze drive, but our natural special defensive bulk shines through, it's able to do less than half, does pop my balloon to ruin my birthday party. However, we do not get fully paralyzed this time, and a poison jab is going to take care of the nine tails. So at this point, the fairies are gone. You know, Tentacruel being at half health is still mostly fine here. We also shake off the taunt just in case we want to bust out, you know, some more swords later on. But they're going to end up going into the Arachnid here. So... Bubble Buddy is a Pokemon that does very well on the special defensive side, but not so much the physical side. Also, Paralyzed Tentacruel literally outspeeds and is able to take care of the Araquanid in one hit with the Poison Jab. And that is actually amazing. Not a lot of the time you see speed investment on those things, and it pays off for us as we're faster even Paralyzed. So that takes care of that, and now we have the Serena here. Final Pokemon. Serena should be able to obviously outspeed here. I'm just gonna keep on jabbing. It's worked out for me so far, and we're just gonna it's gonna stick with it as um, we obviously have the super effective hit. And there's not a lot that this thing seems to get in terms of coverage, you know, against the Tentacruel here. So they actually end up committing the Terra Normal here. It puts the Diamond on the head. This thing is looking fabulous as hell. As a Petal Blizzard is actually enough to take care of the Tentacruel, but not before we were able to put this team in shambles. So. At this point now, I can go into whatever I like, and Serena without a rapid spin is going to still be slower than uh, something like my Chandelier. I think this thing has like base 72 speed, so I can freely bring in the Chandelier here who does not have a super effective hit considering now this thing's normal, but we're speedy. I can still go for the flamethrower, and yeah, this thing shouldn't have much to hit me with. We're able to knock it down to around half. They do just go for another Petal Blizzard here. We take that super nicely as now the indoor snow is gonna go away. Finally freezing his hell in here, and I can just go for one more flamethrower that's gonna take care of this arena, and uh, that is gonna be the end of the match. Tentacruel is the absolute goat for that one, I swear. Nobody sees, you know, the physical sweeper Tentacruel coming. Plus, I feel like people just don't know how fast this Tentacruel really is. It's actually, it's quite quick, so <laughs> that's gonna take care of that, and uh, now we're gonna get ourselves into the second match. Hey, if you enjoy these multi-battle videos, make sure to leave a like. It really does help out. YouTube enjoys when you click that thumbs up button, and so do I. So, this time I'm working with a bit, little bit of a different team. Same Tentacruel, and uh, they have a very scary team over there. Let's go ahead and get into it. So, this time my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Mouse Hold. Now, Wholesome Mouse Family looks innocent. However, this thing is absolutely evil. Now, luckily, of course, 
I do have the lead Bastiodon who can definitely take hits from this thing and, you know, freely set up my Stealth Rock here. Now, turn one, they're actually going to end up committing the Terra here. I'm thinking, oh, damn, Mouse is about to go crazy. I don't know what kind of Terra they're going to be working with. As it turns out, they're just going to go straight Terra normal, and they just basically want to get their bling going. It's going to boost their normal damage. I figure this thing probably wants to set up a tidy up, and that's exactly what they want to do. So, probably didn't need to go for the turn one Terra there, but again, at least now they've intimidated me with their shiny, shiny hat. So... They go for that tidy up, get themselves basically a free dragon dance here as I'm just minding my own damn business and I set up a you know, the stealth rock here. So the reason why I'm not worried about being set up on is because of the fact that of course I do have the red card Bastiard on. They're actually going to end up going for a second tidy up here and they're thinking we're going to get greedy over here. Get ourselves to plus two attack, plus two speed and a population bomb is going to do even a lot to even Bastiard on here with the 10 hit. So... Uh, they get that boost there as I actually have the body press coverage, which doesn't quite knock this thing out. So now it's pretty much time to take a hit here. Now, I just decided to try to set up my Stealth Rock once again here as Population Bomb is kind of their only option against something like the Bastiodon. Now, of course, it's not going to do a whole lot, but they bring out the entire mouse fucking neighborhood to hit me. And uh, it is going to do over half with the 10 hits, um, but I'm like literally fully defensive Bastiodon. So... Yeah, there's not a better mon to really take care of this thing unless I was like Rocky Helmet, but I am red card, so I can be like, hey, actually, that is going to eject your ass out of the game and just drag in something random here. So, Mouse Hold is actually in a pretty decent spot for me now because I'm able to set up my Stealth Rock here on the Switch, and now I believe that thing comes in and dies to the Stealth Rock damage. So, no Mouse Hold for you, good sir, as this did bring in an Azumarill, and... Azumarill is a little bit of a threat here if it wants to go for something like the Belly Drum. However, they do ass just assess the threat in front of them and they go for that liquidation. is going to take care of the Bastiodon. But we did exactly what we needed to do. We were able to, you know, force the mouse hold out. Did not get to set up on us any further. And we also got uh, some rocks up. So we're feeling pretty good. Now with the free switch, I have one little jelly who's actually in a perfect spot to come in here. I bring in the Tentacruel as I know that Azumarill is both afraid of something like a Sludge Bomb and they probably do not want to stay in here, which does allow me to go right for that Swords Dance here. So they are of course going to switch out the Azumarill and uh, they're about to see the absolute power of the <laughs> physical attacking Tentacruel. So they expect the Sludge Bomb, they're of course going to go into the Steel type in the Golden Go. It also floats in the air with its Air Balloon. And we're just having ourselves a little balloon party over here. But I'm able to set up that Swords Dance and we are about to sting real hard. Because I do also have the coverage here with the knockoff. And after a Swords Dance uh, and the, the chip from the Stealth Rock, that does take care of the Golden Go. And it's not every day that you see Tentacruel just one-shotting Golden Goes. And also outspeeding them because it seems like they'd be faster riding around on their golden skateboard or whatever the hell that thing's got. But... Tentacruel reign supreme, and now we have a big threat in front of us, which is the Ursaluna. I can go for the liquidation, however, it doesn't quite knock this thing out. But, the good news is, Blood Moon has to go for its strongest attack with the Blood Moon, and our naturally special defensive bolt comes in clutch once again, because we are able to live it just barely, which then allows us to finish it off with a liquidation. So that is two huge threats out of the way, especially uh, the Blood Moon, that thing is an absolute monster. And luckily, yeah, that's going to take care of it. So, I just think it's crazy that a Blood Moon with a Modest Nature max special attack with 140 base power attack with Stab isn't able to knock us out. It also, it wasn't able to go for an Earth Power because of the fact that we have our Air Balloon. But this now does bring in the Urshifu, who does in fact outspeed me because this bear quick as hell. They end up going for that U-turn and that takes care of the Tentacruel. But, not before we were able to poke some nice holes in their team. And now the biggest threat is going to be this thing, the Ogre Pond paired with that Urshifu, which is going to be a little bit of a challenge getting through. So the good thing is they go into the Ogre Pond after killing me with the U-turn, which allows me to go into whatever I want. And I'm going to end up going into the Porygon. The reason is, you know, I'm specially defensive. Uh, however, if I can take an attack, which I should be able to, um, I can get a Thunder Wave off on this thing, and that's going to make it a whole lot easier to deal with in the back. So... I'm going to end up just going right for that T-Wave here. Their best option uh, is the Ivy Cudgel, and that is going to do a big old chunk, you know, to the Porygon too. But we actually do take it nicely because for some reason this rubber duck is actually made out of pure fucking... What's that material from the movies? Vibranium or something? I regardless, I take the Ivy Cudgel nicely, and the Para is going to be super nice against the Ogre Pond for us. And seeing as we're able to take one more, I'm just going to stay in here and go for an Ice Beam just to get a little extra chip on the Ogre Pond, make it a little easier to deal with. 
Uh, while Tentacruel would have had a field day on this thing, I'm down that, so I gotta figure out a second plan. So, I do get it, you know, below half, and I'm also now faster after the para, so I can go for another Ice Beam. Damn near take care of this thing, uh, however they do finish me with that Horn Leech. So, they get a little bit of health back here, but we did exactly what we needed to do in, you know, crippling the Ogre Pond here, and now I can figure out who I want to go into. And, of course, this team is working with the absolute biggest guy, the Regigigas. I go into this thing, and it is Taco Tuesday, bitch. We come in, uh, of course, slow start is gonna start the five turns at this point, and uh, I'm gonna see if I can get the, the Reggie to, to get something going. So, uh, they do break through the pair there, unfortunately. They're also still faster, even being paralyzed. However, I do actually take an attack and then sit on him and then knock it out with a body slam. So, it's almost more funny using Regigigas and getting it a, a kill like, before the slow start wears off. And uh, we just built different out here. So, that takes care of Ogre Pond. However, there is still one massive threat on their team, and that, again, is the Urshifu. So, I do actually have a plan for this, and I've actually been conserving my Terra for this exact situation, and that is going for the Ghost Terra. I'm basically sitting my big-ass Regigigas on a big-ass silver platter here saying, please, go for a close combat or something against me, and then I put on my Ghost hat and be like, Psych bitch is gonna go right through me. So, I go for that Terra Ghost here. Reggie is in full form at this point. However, they just go for the surging strikes and just don't even don't even want to mess around with the, the fighting stab against me. They probably figure that the surging strike still takes care of me. However, it does bring me down to 22 HP um, after the three hits. And now I went for the drain punch just to get like a little extra health back. I'm honestly, I'm not able to do shit for damage unless I get that uh, <laughs> slow start uh, to wear off. And it would have really helped me out here if they didn't you know, go for you know the surging strikes there. But it is unfortunate, however, at least I was able to get like a minuscule ass chip on this thing. And while I do have the Meganium in the back as a good answer, you know, against the Urshifu, Regigigas doesn't really provide me a whole lot of value in this late game. So I decided to let him go down to the next Surging Strikes because, you know, it is what it is. And uh, at least, hey, Reggie got a kill with Slow Start still being active. So we call that a dub. Anyway, uh, at this point, I can go into whatever I want. Now, of course, I'm running out of options here, and it's looking like Meganium is actually positioned pretty well here. So, I can go into defensive Meganium, and I'm literally max HP and defense on this fella, and we actually have a pretty solid matchup. The only other thing alive on their team is going to be Azumarill. Of course, they can pivot, and they decide to go for the sack. They're just going to go right into Mousehold here. Mouse family's like, hey, what's uh, what's happening? And boom, I'm just dead as hell. So, the Stealth Rock kills it, and that is amazing. Uh, so they sack that thing off, and uh, Meganium's like, oh, good to uh, good to see you. Don't mind me. I'm just going to place the old substitute here. I go for the substitute, which is great, because now Meganium behind a sub cares about literally nothing. Meganium does not usually have a spot in any match where I'm like, damn, thank God I have the Meganium. But in this specific situation, Meganium's like the best thing to have for us. So <laughs> they decide to go back into the Urshifu here. And ordinarily, this Meganium just likes to click, yeah, like body press with like a, a fighting Terra or even the Leech Seed. But we're going full offensive ass Meganium. But they decide to go for the U turn, which of course does break the substitute. Um, but it's fine. That's exactly why we set the sub up. And now uh, the Azumarill is going to be forced to take this Giga Drain. And it should be a two hit KO, whereas it probably can't touch Meganium that much unless. Something like an Ice Punch, which it's still not going to hurt me that, mad, that bad because, again, I'm fully defensive-ass Flower over here. So, I go for that Giga Drain, do a nice little chunk of damage while also getting myself to full. And the funny part is, Meganium is actually also naturally faster than the Azumarill, which does go down to a Giga Drain. Uh, the thing probably relies on, like, a Belly Drum Aqua Jet set. Uh, but that's going to take care of the Azumarill, and now it's just us and this OP-ass Bear. However, I have the greatest starter Pokemon in all of the land with Meganium and we're positioned perfectly to where I can just go for a Giga Drain here. Their super effective hit is going to be the U-Turn, which does actually end up getting a critical hit, which still doesn't even bother us. And then I'm like, hey, I'm just going to steal some of that HP. That does take care of the Urshifu and Meganium finishes off the match in green health out here, baby. So that is going to do it. And uh, it was a super fun game as well. And they, we just had to show them the real quick the power of both Tentacruel and the Meganium. So. Thank you guys very much for watching. Super fun couple of matches here. Hopefully you did enjoy. Make sure to leave a like if you did. And I'll catch you next time. Peace out.